this week's podcast. The Nugget. Whoa. whoa. It's the AOL Same customer problems. service call. Wow, that is a... Well, Where the guy couldn't cancel, case. right? Yes. Couldn't cancel. We didn't even talk about this week's podcast that was uploaded yesterday. I'm yeah, trying to remember. Right. We have the... Uh, Jimmy, Ozzy, 18 pounds of books, <laughs> birthday yes. present, oh, that's great. saga. We did the whole thing. And I'm trying to remember. We have Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer versus Anthony. Versus Anthony. There were a lot of... Oh, um, yeah. People like that it one. It was a bit intense, but there were a lot of fucking jokes in there as well. Yes. And uh, uh, I know. Doc Gooden and David Lee Roth. <laughs> yeah. And some people love that David Lee Roth was a part of that interview. And certainly there's a lot of people that hated it. Right. I'm in the camp of I loved it. Well, it was a very difficult time <laughs> I went through. I was I missed a lot of magic moments in my career and life due to uh drug abuse. Uh I was taking drugs when I I should We were taking drugs on the bus. It was back in eighty four, but we did about did about Did you love it? It was it? some of the greatest moments we ever had. Shoot me dab a doob. What the <laughs> fuck, Dave? Did you love it or hate it? I loved it. You did, right? Loved it. In a weird way, I love it when uh, the listeners get frustrated by stuff, too. Uh, especially Dave. <laughs> right. You know, Dave's, the way he frustrates people is fantastic. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but... First of all... It would have been nice to have Doc Gooden without David Lee Roth, but yeah, Doc but Gooden was a last-second uh, booking, because he, he was sort of scheduled, and he wasn't, and then all of a sudden, Roland comes running in some days and goes, look, he, we got blah, blah, and uh -huh. he's coming down the hall, and, and you just take him, obviously. And we already had David Lee Roth booked, so what were we going to do, you know? Here's another thing. If we made it work. I, I don't care what year it is, what David Lee Roth has done or hasn't done of late and, and his uh, successes and failures throughout his career and stuff like that. That's fucking David Lee Roth, lead singer of Van Halen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if I ever thought back in the day that I would be sitting here hanging, with him. hanging out with the fucking guy as he's asking questions to Dwight Gooden, I know. I'm just like, I'm not going to... What, am I going to get mad because some guy on Twitter is like, he wouldn't shut up! <laughs> fuck you, it's David Lee Roth! Yeah. David Lee Roth and Doc Gooden. They can do whatever the Holy fuck they fuck. want. Dude, come on. Holy fuck. That, that was an insane moment. I never grew up grew up from Long Island. Yeah. Fast forward a couple decades and, and David Lee Roth is hanging and now says, look, anytime you need me, I'll, I'm yeah. there for you guys. I'll even fucking come in if you guys are on vacation. I'll do your show for you. I saw him as a speck under a spotlight at the Nassau Coliseum back in the day back, and it was an amazing show and right fucking the he was the fucking rock star I remember being in high school uh, you know Van Halen albums drinking yeah and then you fast forward and he's hanging big what? dopey headphones plugged in with the right. big quarter inch jack into right. the record player <laughs> oh, I used to love that shit. Were you a Van Halen fan growing no, up at no, all? I was not. I mean, that uh, first album was ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I've teased them a lot. In, in all honesty, in more than was genuinely my feelings. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. enjoyed them. We, I was never. Oh, believe me, I love teasing fucking oh. David Lee Roth too and making jokes and everything. We made great. fun of him over but, the years. But uh, when you think about it, you know, grew up listening to that fucking guy as a rock god, mm -hmm. and then he, there he is sitting right there. Asking dumb questions to Dwight Gooden. <laughs> but you know what's the funny? I think of this sometimes, too, like wh how much fun this gig is. It's like, yeah. I ask people, and I, I, I raised the issue of Ben Kingsley to somebody, and I'm like, I'm like, it amazes me that I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him. And in the real world, in entertainment, I have zero credibility with this guy. <laughs> right. like, there's nothing yeah. for him to say to me other than yes, no, That's and funny. walk away. Right, right. But in this moment... I ask questions, we ask questions, they answer you. I know, it's the weird <laughs> thing. I, I know, they it's have the to, weirdest they have thing. to answer you. Dude, they have to, like, you, I, we, we, we did that with fucking Harvey Weinstein when he was in, you weren't here that day, I think. Remember um, when Harvey Weinstein came in? He's the yeah, fucking yeah, head of yeah, Miramax. Yeah. In, I don't get in the room with Harvey Weinstein alone. No. Never. Ever. But in this situation, you see them in a weird way where they want you to be nice to them. Yes. And, and they they're answer. a little nervous. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Like they're happy you're having fun to get. Mm -hmm. It's like anywhere outside of this room, 
and you ask them even close to what you ask them here, security takes you away. Yeah. Or, or they just <laughs> dominate you somehow. Right, right. They, they give you one quick answer. And then blow you off. Or they're in charge oh, completely. That's way, whatever. What I find fascinating is, you know, a lot of these guys, as soon as the mics go off, they're out of here. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, all yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get the guy that all of a sudden the mics are off and you're like, okay, that's it. The interview's over and the yeah, commercials yeah. start and they just hang out. They hang out. And ask like personal questions. Yeah, like, yeah. What? Like Ron Howard did that. Remember the day? Like they're like, he's got to go. He's got to go. So we wrap up the interview, and all of a sudden he hung out during the whole commercial break. Yeah. And and he, and he's interested in what we've been up to, and he he's very aware of our show and satellite radio in general. And he was he was talking about the channels he likes here. And I'm sitting here going, he doesn't have to do this. People, he's get a this, big A lister, and he's still hanging. People get this weird impression that like we we must know. What we're doing if we're interviewing these people, and it's like, no, this we I I find it as odd as as anyone else would that we're getting actual you know having an audience with these people. It's wild. I said to Sharon because Florentine came to the the Sabbath Town Hall, and at the end of it, uh, Sharon was so fucking nice, and I'm talking to her and Jim and Jim's brother, and we were just talking because Jim's brother had introduced Jim to Sabbath back in the '70s, so they were talking about that, and I said I remembered I forgot, I used to call England, and I said this to Sharon, <laughs> I used to call Jet Records in England. And tell them I wanted to meet Ozzy. This is 1981. Oh, oh to meet Ozzy? Yeah. Oh, we know who you are. You call him. But I would call this record label in England and go, like, what can I do to meet Ozzy? It was really, like this weird. Wow. Oh, wow. That is fucking. Yeah, man. This is, I was 13, living with my parents. Aw. And, uh, it's adorable. And yeah. you needed to talk to Ozzy. Yeah, I just wanted to meet him. And now Ozzie. you talk to Ozzy. But I mean, that's. How weird is that? But they answer you and they come in and they <laughs> see. It's, a, right. it's such a weird thing when you're set up to interview people and they have to answer you. <laughs> you have to answer me. You think there's a bigger Aussie fan than you out there it's somewhere? Probably, there might be. I mean, um, I don't know. You're on the short list, though. There might be someone that might be bigger than yeah, you. Yeah, these guys with tattoos and stuff. But uh, there's, there's a lot of people Aussie. that love them as much as I do, sure. Mm. But I, I'm just in a very lucky position where I've gotten to to, to know them a little bit, and especially Sharon, and they, and they know that you're going to be good to them and they trust you. And yeah. that's, that's where the very lucky part comes in. They do like loyalty. She wrote me a very nice email afterwards. The, the band was um, thrilled with it. They were please very leave my wrong. husband alone. Yeah. <laughs> Could you please? Well, I'm confused when I hear you talk. Who's you and who's other? You sound just like him. Talk like yourself, will you, you little worm? You little sushi worm. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, shit.